Hey everyone, welcome to part one of our tutorial on how to create uh, open data sets. So first thing you need to know is what is metadata. So metadata is data about your data. And when you include a metadata file, like a code book or data dictionary, what you're doing is creating sort of a guide for users to interpret and understand your data. This allows your data to be open for others to use in their own work, to reproduce your analyses, or to just extend to new hypotheses. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download your data from an online, popular online platform. Here we're going to use Qualtrics that allows you to keep the most metadata possible when downloading your data, which will mean you have to do less work to create your either code book or data dictionary. So this is part one of our kind of three part tutorial on creating data dictionaries and metadata. And this part is kind of how do I get my information from online into one of the applications we discuss in our paper. So first thing here, I'm going to use a data set that I collected for a workshop on data quality. So we're going to work on this one and just kind of show you what it looks like. Um, what we did was we gave people several surveys. So we started with their consent form, right? Then we asked them a couple of demographic questions. So often we code these as things like one and two, but it's really helpful if people know that one is male and two is female. And so we want to hang on to those labels. If you're familiar with SPSS, you might consider these value labels um, or just any kind of factor data if you're more of an R person. Then we asked them a bunch of um, Likert scale items. So it's really going to be important to know that this end is one and this end is six and what these labels were. So mapping on, you know, data that we treat as at least somewhat ordered or continuous to their actual labels. So people know which direction the scale goes is also important. So those are the types of things that metadata includes. Additionally, it might include what the actual question was. So um, this, this format, Qualtrics kind of saves all this information in the background for you. So if I'm wanting to export this in the best way possible, what I can do is come over here to data, export and import, and then export data. So looking at my options here, first option is CSV. So CSV or a TSV file are either comma or tab separated files that um, save the data in what one might consider the best shareable format. So comma separated files are more shareable because they're text and there's no special program one needs to open them. You can open them with things like Excel or um, any real text program because they don't have um, any special encoding. So I always consider comma or tab separated files one of the best to share because it can be open with almost anything. However, in Qualtrics, that means you lose a lot of that information. So when I download the data, often there's two, two choices here. And unfortunately, what you really want is kind of a mix of both. So mostly my scale are items that I want to keep as numbers because they're those response questionnaires where I want to treat the never true to always true as a one to six and not as text. So I I'm probably want to use numeric values, but then I would lose all of that text and for all that information about what those numbers were. So the, the bonus for comma separated values types of files is that they're more accessible by many researchers because there's no special program. The downside is that you're going to lose some of the metadata. So we could pick one of those. I usually pick numeric values and then add those labels back in. The other option here, which might be seem a little strange to say, is to actually export the data as SPSS. So SPSS is a paid program that most researchers are familiar with, and um, it naturally embeds all of the data. So the question is added to a specific uh, label column, and then all of the text mappings of like, this is number one, this equals never true, this is number two, this equals female, that sort of thing, are added to value labels. 
So the good thing here about SPSS files is that it maintain nearly all of the metadata that you're really interested in. And you might just have to add some more descriptors to make question one one more interpretable for other folks. Um, the issue with sharing SPSS files is that often people don't know how to open those if you don't have the program. And the good thing about R, packages like R, using R, is that you can open those and convert them to your own type. But the recommendation here to make things most shareable is going to be to download both the CSV and the SPSS file because then you've covered both bases. You have an easy to read text file that makes the data more open and then you have the file with the most metadata to help you create your data dictionary or your codebook. Now I've already downloaded these and de-identified them because they include uh, IP addresses and a couple of other things that we can't share. So let's look at what the CSV file looks like. So one issue with Qualtrics CSV files is it actually does save some of the metadata for you. It just puts it in a weird place. So this can make it difficult because you don't really want these two lines because you want to be able to read the data in um, into maybe a different program, something like JASP or Jamovi or Stata, it could be mini tab, so you can pick kind of different options. Um, but we can, in some of our metadata creators, use the fact that this information is there to uh, help us along the way. So just some pros and cons here from exporting your data. Uh, CSV files are more, are more open and shareable but you lose some of the con uh, metadata content. SPSS files hang on to that metadata content and um, allow you to create data dictionaries and code books um, a bit quicker. Okay. So this is our first part of our tutorial about downloading the data. We're now going to take these two types of data sets and show you how to create a, di a data dictionary and a code book. And then we'll talk about what you do with all of this stuff once you're done.